This is not a clickbait video. I have been using my M1 Mac Mini for over a year now and it still faces obstacles that should have been taken care of by now. This is unacceptable mm -mm. for the money that I'm paying. In this video, I'm going to give you some reasons why this might be the perfect yes. computer for you and some mm. reasons why you might want to skip it. Hey, you, huh? part of that 98% watching this video that's not subscribed. Am I doing something wrong? Go ahead and leave a comment down below and let me know. But if you are enjoying this, go ahead and give me a subscribe, turn on the notification bell so you don't miss my next video. Now I do want to make this known right up front. I am not the average user that Apple's trying to sell this M1 Mac Mini to. Let's talk about what this machine can do for who Apple is actually trying to market it to. It's for those who are going to be using this with their other Apple products, apps, and software. You can be on your iPhone searching the internet and continue it on your desktop computer where you left off. If you want to share a picture with your machine or another iPhone, you can airdrop it in seconds. If you have an Apple TV, you can start watching a video on your phone and then mirror it to your TV and enjoy it on the big screen. When the M1 was developed and released, Apple software and companies that work with them we're pretty much ready to go. Those who weren't were left scrambling to get caught up so their stuff worked properly. There is a program that's called Rosetta 2. This Yippee. allows for programs to be used on the M1 setup with a catch. In some cases, it was okay. Now I had a couple things that were completely unusable. Even after being out for a year and a half, there's still a lot of programs that don't work natively with the M1. And for this reason, I would suggest if you have something that you depend on, don't buy this machine uh -uh. or any M1 machine yet. Being an early adopter does have its disadvantages. The reason why I say this is to make anyone who does decide to pick up a machine, if you use a third party software, for example, tax software, I strongly suggest that you check with that company to ensure it will work with the M1 chip. Now you can do this by usually checking on the website's FAQ to see if it will work with the M1 software. If you do not see it there, definitely feel free to reach out to them just to make sure. Heck, you'd be better off waiting if you can. If you can't, then maybe even pick up an inexpensive PC or save a lot of money and get a previous gen Intel Mac where everything works. Now there are a few things happening in the Apple rumor world that might affect your decision to buy now or later. I'm gonna go ahead and give you two options here. You can certainly buy this machine now and feel good knowing that you will have a great price machine that will do what you need for years to come. Also, if you have the ability to wait and the new machine is announced, you could save a few bucks and pick up the last gen once the new generation is out. I have something very important that I wanna add but before I do that, I want to talk to those who might use this machine for more specialized things real quick. So, feel free to leave a comment down below and stick around for what I do need to share. Using a brand new machine with a new kind of chip was also a big lesson hmm. in patience, as I just mentioned. Now, I heavily rely on my machine for what I do on YouTube. Now, I use Final Cut, Photoshop, Lightroom, Blender, and many other third-party options. Now it does turn out that there were some programs that didn't work with Rosetta 2 at all and some that were slow and basically unusable on the M1 chip. Like I mentioned before, it's important to check to see if they will work with the manufacturer before picking up the machine. Now for those of you who may be like, well why did you pick it up at all then? My reasons for doing this was twofold. Number one, my 2015 iMac was pretty much on its last leg and I was really hoping for that 27 inch <laughs> M1 iMac version. I figured the Mac Mini would hold me over in the hopes that that was going to be announced in 2021. <sighs> Still waiting. Now for those of you who rely on your machine for third party software function as myself, I say do not nope. buy this machine right now. Now I have two reasons beyond what I mentioned about the software working. The first reason is there are credible rumors that Apple is looking to upgrade the Mac Mini not only with the next gen silicone chip, but an updated design that would allow for more ports. You're already dealing with the potential of apps supported in the M1 world. So waiting for the updated design will allow for a better experience when it comes to using their other accessories. Also, we might see an increase in specs such as memory and storage. 
The second, if you can wait and the machine is not what we've been led to believe, then you would have the option of saving a little bit of money and picking up the previous generation and still have a solid machine for years to come. Now about that thing that affects everyone who may be interested in picking up the Mac Mini or any other Mac computer. And that warning is about trying to save money with buying an older generation. The newer products Apple is rumored to be releasing also come with the rumors because of our current economy, we could see some price increases. Oh, come on! Which in turn would leave the previous generation not decreasing much, if at all. I wanted to share this because I think this is actually what's going to happen, and I don't want you to be too upset if you decide to wait and still end up not saving any money. I mean, normally Apple's products hold their value, but in this case, it might really affect the price. Only time will tell. Whatever you decide to do, the machine is very capable for 98% of the functions and would be an incredible machine for anyone looking to save money. And while you're doing your research on desktops, I did a couple videos on why I love and hate the iPhone 13 Pro. Go ahead and check them out right here. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, turn on notification bells, and I'll see you guys in the next video.